this week on the Kirby Boys. It's a half cent, I can see it. Holy oh, crap. Oh, oh, it's the, gonna be there. Look at the face on that 1793. Yeah, that's a Morgan. It's a Morgan dollar. That is beautiful too. You just don't get to video one of these very often. <laughs> no, you don't. And I just, right here, it's on a button. And we think it might, I don't know if I can get a good enough light to see it here, but we think this might be one of George Washington, that George Washington Eagle button. The inaugural button. Yeah. And if that is, holy crap, looks like a thousand bucks or something. So to get, there, there you can see the Eagle. Holy crap. Yeah, that's an 1832 capped bust half dime. Oh, that's just awesome. Okay, guys, it's an 1864 two cent piece. A half real. No. The Holy Grail. Holy mother of God. Hi, and welcome back to my channel. This is going to be a long video, but well worth the watch. So pause the video, grab a cup of coffee, kick back, and enjoy. Okay, got your coffee? Here we go. I've been metal detecting for about 36 years. I started with a Garrett, but eventually upgraded to a Mine Lab e track For the first 25 years, I hunted old home sites, old house sites, one-room schoolhouse sites and churches, and I did pretty well. Finding a few coins at almost every one of them. But my first seeded dime actually was at an old home site. But after about 13 years, or about 13 years ago, I mean, uh, I met my detecting buddy, Roy. He taught me how to research in a way I never knew. Using that method, the method I'm going to disclose to you in this video, we found sites where it was not unusual to find 20, 30, even 50 coins, mostly silver, and Indian heads in a single day. We hunted sites that made our legs feel like rubber stooping and standing while digging coins. Every three or four feet, every two or three swings would bring out another high tone beep. Why am I going to disclose this? Well, we both live in Tuscarawas County, Ohio. Everything, and I do mean everything, within about an hour of us has been pounded. Tuscarawas, Carroll, Wayne, Holmes, Stark, Columbiana, and County uh, Portage County. There's literally nothing left to hunt. I've spent hours and hours researching only to find the places we've already cleaned out. When someone says never hunted out, baloney. We've gone back to some of our honey holes to places we swung for five hours and came up empty handed. We've ventured out of the area some, but the problem with much travel is you find a place after a lot of research, drive two hours to get there, and find standing corn. Or the property owner won't let you in. Or there's nobody home to ask. And please, 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 don't ever go on private property without permission. Do not ruin the sport and the reputation of the rest of us by doing that. If you do, you're the scum of the earth. All right, enough preaching. Let's get down to business. The first thing you have to do is subscribe to newspapers.com. You can pay for this on their site, but you can get it free through many libraries. I get it through Maslin Library. You apply online with a library for a library card, then enter your barcode and password, then go to their genealogy section and find newspapers.com. Then log in and search away, all free.
So first you're going to want to enter the area where you want to hunt, the county or a town that had a newspaper, and then enter search words like picnic grove or grove or woods meeting or church picnic and hit enter. And you'll see a whole list on the left of newspapers that have articles that meet the search criteria. And right off the bat, this is a total random search I did of Marion County. Right off the bat, I see hold big picnic. Farmers of the county hold a big picnic. That's one I want to investigate further. Okay, so the name of the grove is Dayton Blow Grove. And the article is a 1908 article. And you want to find a map as close to the right ear as you can. In this case, I couldn't find one near that. And I found a blow, but it wasn't Dayton. Probably it was Dayton's son, uh, Charles, I believe it was. And you'll see that here in a minute. And we see that there were 3,000 people in attendance. And the year of the article, 1908. So the first thing we want to do is find a map of the area we wanted to hunt. So in this case, I searched Marion County, Ohio. The first thing that will come up is a list of all the county maps of Marion County, Ohio. And then to the right, you'll see you click on Atlas. When you click on Atlas, it will bring up a list of the townships uh, by year. And you want as close to the year of the article as you could get, which in this case, I couldn't get very close. But it's close enough that it worked out. So in the article, it said that the grove is four and a half miles north of LaRue. LaRue is in Montgomery Township. However, if you go four miles north of LaRue, you actually end up in Grand Township. So now we got to go back and find Grand Township. And obviously, uh, Blow that, that we're looking for, Blow Grove, the Blow will be right on the south end of Grand Township. So here's Grand Township. And when we zoom in, sure enough, we find a Charles Blow that is right at that intersection that the article mentioned. Uh, and that's probably the father of the blow mentioned in the article, because the map is older than the article. Okay, so now we go to Google Earth. I use, you can use Google Maps. doesn't really matter. And you find LaRue, and you measure four and a half miles north, and it puts you right at that mean intersection. So then it said that um, the grove was four miles west of Scotttown. I couldn't find a Scotttown on the map. So what I did was measure four miles east of that intersection. And sure enough, there was a little clump of houses there that used to be Scotttown. So if we zoom in on Google Earth, sure enough, right there is Blow Grove. Uh, and the church and cemetery just north of there at that next intersection uh, line up with a church and cemetery on the old map. So that pinpoints it right on the nose for us. Also, it said in the article that the grove was 25 acres. Now, if you go to the GIS, that woods is 19, plus a little corner that's out of it is adds up right at 25. So there's your grove. And if we go to a street view of Google Earth, there I believe is what was the old entrance to the grove. Okay, so there are hundreds, literally, of these picnic groves in every county. Don't everybody rush to LaRue, Ohio. Do your own searching and you'll find a lot of picnic groves just like this near you. I also uh, just checked a little bit. I found a 1910 article still held in Blue Grove, and still two to 3,000 in attendance. So it went on for numerous years. I didn't keep looking, but it might have went on for 10 or 15 years with 3,000 people there at least every year. 
Well, I hope this helps some of you find some great places to hunt. Thanks for watching the video, and if you liked it, please give a thumbs up and subscribe. And leave a comment below and let me know how you do or if you find one. I'll see you next video.